How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm really well. Thank you for asking. Um, good, good. Yeah, it's so great to get to chat to you. And thank you for letting me uh, give me the opportunity to listen to your new music as well. It's, it's been a wonderful companion for me over the last couple of days, just uh. having the album with me wherever I go. It's been lovely. So congratulations. Ah, uh. uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, before we dive into that, though, um, I mean, the last time we spoke was yes. with you yourself and Edward uh, as All Quiet was about to be unleashed in the world. And yes. I mean, oh, my God, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things happened. <laughs> yeah. Then, yes. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, it's... but, it, you know, uh, we, we wouldn't I would have not uh, said anything about that uh, at that time. I, I was, yeah, I'm, Just... I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's so it's so it's so wonderful, and and I just thought as well your your acceptance speeches mm -hmm. at both the Oscars and the Baftas mm -hmm. were were just really lovely, um, mm -hmm. and it must be so I don't know what I hope you don't mind me asking, but what what that sensation of going up there and kind of being in that position with looking out on that audience mm -hmm. and the recognition for your work it, it mm -hmm. must how what what does it feel like what's the kind of it well, just... it's a little bit, you feel, I wouldn't say maybe that's negative, uh, but uh, you feel maybe a little numb in a way. Yeah. You, 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 don't, you don't really know. Well, of course, I was, I knew from last time that I was, uh, you know, that the closer you get to your category, the more you, you get nervous. And uh, yeah. you know, of course, when your name will be called, you are like, oh, my God. And this time... I mean, with Lion, we were already also in a kind of position. But, um, you know, when the first time La La Land won, La La Land won, then uh, I, we were quite expecting that this is now gone, going to happen all the time, you know, <laughs> uh, because because we felt like, OK, well, uh, I think that train is gone. We the La La Land will win uh, now every, everything. And it did. And this time, I mean, when... Justin Hurwitz was winning, I think he was winning the Critics' Choice Award uh, for Babylon. Babylon, uh, yeah. We, I was like, I don't know, maybe it's the same thing again. But then when we, when I won the, the BAFTA, suddenly the whole thing turned around. And, uh, you know, and the, the, the good news is, I mean, Justin and me, we met after that a couple of times. And it was very lovely because we, in a way, said, oh, last time I was losing... A lot of the the prizes now you uh, you know now it's your <laughs> yeah. turn in a way, but but it's not all about losing. Of course, it's more that you are you know you feel excited, and the only thing you have to prepare in a way for an evening like that is the speech. There's nothing yeah. else. I mean, if you lose, um, you you just sit there and you are with your family and you're celebrating and you get over it in a way and you it's fine. But when you win, of course, then uh, you you have to go up there. That's the only job you have to do. So what yeah. I did now, I did now. I was actually learning. I was preparing the speech in a way that um, I knew exactly that in the time that I had um, that was there for me, that I could say everything I wanted. So I, I prepared for who I want to say thank you to. I felt like I want to not not go too deep into every person and every yeah. you know but i also felt um with the film it needs a little bit of a yeah of more like something that considers uh you know the topic in a way yeah. and that's that's what i i tried and 40 45 seconds is not long no it's not it's not no. No. <laughs> not when you consider the kind of the you know the people that you've well, the journey that this whole film's kind of been on as well, but it was so wonderful to see so many of the people involved in the film celebrated, and um, yeah, and and seeing Edward up there as well was just was uh, was, yeah. was great, so brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I no, I yeah. actually saw him recently, really by chance. Um, mm -hmm. I was um recording for a, a um I do the 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 crime podcast mm -hmm. to accompany the crime, and. Uh, I was just uh, going into someone's house. I'm not going to name names, but um, he was there and it's like, oh, wow, it was so nice to see him to kind of say congratulations in person. So yeah, yeah. yeah it was great. Did yeah. it, um, 
does it does it change much you in terms of that kind of you know you you're already on a world stage prior to this this project you know considering your the work that you've done previous to this but but with that recognition that win on those things does it I mean does does it change things has it changed anything for you well it changed things but it also doesn't I mean it's yeah. a, it's a it's both I mean what it doesn't change is that um, I have still to work yeah. and I have to work hard and I have to um, you know I have to uh, compete with others I also um, you know that and the, to think that this is now um, like the comfortable zone in a way um, that's not the not the yeah. case yeah but at the same time what comes in well in myself I feel of course uh, you know there's a little bit of a um, you know relaxation happening because suddenly you realize ah okay that's actually the 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 biggest price you can win in a way for a, for a film for film music and um in a way i i can do it but that doesn't mean that i can always do it it's just yeah. also a you know it's also a, a question of the circumstances a lot of uh, the the prizes are not only for the best score i mean i would say in the, that year um you know in this year when uh, when it came to the to all the other scores it was pretty. Uh, I would say it was one of the best scores in the, you know, and a lot of yeah. people mirrored that to me. They always said, "Man, listen, this is the best score we've heard." Uh, with all the comparison, this is so strong and so, so, and to get a prize for that one and not for the weakest one is, of course, a very, uh, you know, is very um, encouraging. Yeah. In a way. Well, um, you and, know, we. Yeah. Yeah. We had the, you know, I had the absolute luxury of chatting to to you on a, quite on a number of occasions actually about it, be it at yeah. one that huge panel that we did at the the BFI IMAX with so yeah. many of you involved. That was one of my favorite Q and A's I did for the whole award. It was so great. But then mm -hmm. chatting to you and Edward and and just hearing about the kind of, you know, and watching that film as well, especially watching on that huge screen of the kind of how the the the, the score within the film was was such a kind of it was like a driving force. It was like a pulse of the film. It was just kind of, it was so important to the storytelling, to the characters, mm -hmm. to to kind of, to all of it. Um, but one thing that you've always done alongside all your work, whether it be, you know, as as uh, work with Dustin or on your own is, 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 uh, is your solo work as well. And um, Hauschka is this, you know, is this other side to you where you, you it's for you initially in terms of when you're making it but then you know once you release something it isn't yours anymore it belongs yeah. to the people who who enjoy it and stuff yeah. um tell me a little bit for people who are maybe just discovering this side to you for the first time yeah. what is Hauschka what what is it for you and to you well, Hauschka is in a way is like a synonym for freedom in a way and for, uh, you know, um, I'm, of course, I'm hiding behind a name, but at <laughs> the same time, um, the name can be everything. It can be a band, yeah. it can be a, a woman, it can be a man. Um, so in a way, what I want to have is actually the freedom of not getting into an area where I'm having to fulfill a role. With my own name as a pianist, I would I was always thinking if I'm saying Volker Bertelmann pianist, uh, then that is already expl explaining yeah. a lot of things and it's creating a lot of expectations. But when you when people are hearing um, Hauschka is coming into town, they don't have a, a clue. Um, and, and of course, fans know that at some point. But also the music is in a way not uh, it's shifting. I mean, I'm using that as an experimentation platform where I can combine music, videos, lyrics, um, dance, uh, you know, all sorts of art forms. And I'm not, um, I'm not forced to fulfill a role, which I totally love. So that doesn't mean like, um, I mean, when I'm working on a film, I totally love the collaboration work. Yeah. Um, and it also in other contexts, I love the exchange with other people. But um, mm. Hauschka is in a way the the groundwork is that I'm if I'm feeling I want to just do a vocal record, I'm just doing vocals. If I want to do a, a record just with a mandolin, I'm sitting there with a mandolin. I'm not forced to 
you know, to be yeah. always the same person. And I think as well, what I love about the, you know, when you when you listen to, but you also kind of do a bit of a deep dive into the different records, whether it's abandoned cities or what if, you know, in terms of for you, what they provide, you know, in terms of with what if about the idea of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the idea of, of kind of, you know, having kids and what their what their life as adults will be or what their experience as adults will be. And that mm. whole, you know, what if can be so many things to so many people. But when you are finding a jumping off point for these for these albums and for these projects and stuff, is it a very personal place of, I don't know, a question or a experience from for you? Is that is that starting point? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot of times. I mean, if you look at the uh, how actual what if in a way is, I mean, that was just the record where I wanted to create questions. I mean, the titles of the pieces are in a way the uh, completing the question what if. So you have, for example, what if nature fights back? What if uh, you know that? So the the song titles in a way are completing that, and. Um, it's in a way dealing with the future of the earth and of you know the perspective uh, of of things and uh, of the planet in a way. Um, and uh, this record now is dealing with you know we came out of um, out of COVID. Um, then you know we have the the war, we have the climate change. We and I was I was um, working at that time. I, I mean you know while I was thinking more and more about it then i was also working on all quiet uh, mm. and i was working on war sailor on the other film and during that whole process i was feeling that um in the end uh, you know what what is uh what what will um, we what is the this the pole we're standing on when everything collapses that was yeah. my question yeah um, and what is the what is the main what i want to focus on uh, no matter what uh and the one thing is of course there's a um, collective energy that maybe is sometimes you know hopeless or where people are just feeling uh, that doesn't work anymore or this will not work but i think the only um, possibility of changing that is is the hum is humanity it's uh, mm -hmm. which you know is actually dealing with the other humans and exchanging um, time with them and uh, experience and having, you know, having a good life. Yeah, that is, I would say, the fundament of, um, you know, of changing also perspectives for for the world. Um, so m my feeling was when I came out of that thoughtful process, in a way, I um, I said, I think I want to dedicate um, the album to know to humanity to ph philanthropy to something that is actually dealing with words that are expressing let's say you know um the ex the, the existential perspectives on humanity in a way yeah so, and where do you where do you start musically with it is it always on the piano or how do you with this record with philanthropy what was the starting point the starting point was that I worked with a lot of like more like loop elements, I, which I'm creating on the piano, but they are, um, you know, a lot of times very, um, they don't sound anymore like a piano because they go into, let's say, a, a tape loop and then they are crunched and then they are like, you know, tuned downwards. And, uh, and then I'm, once I'm doing these experimentations, a lot of times I'm just sitting on the piano and I'm starting to fiddle around and I'm just recording and recording and recording. Um, and then um, sometimes I have a day when I stand up uh, at eight o'clock, I sit down at my, my in my studio, I press record and I just record. And then I don't think about too much about what I have recorded um, and yeah. then I just leave, I leave it there. And then maybe um, a week later, I will open it up and I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then uh, it starts, I'm starting to select. So, so I'm yeah. looking into things that I really like that are resonating me, with me because when you're creating, um, you are in a kind of trance or in a kind of bubble. Um, nobody is disturbing you and it's coming out of you. And that doesn't mean that everything that comes out of me is good. You know, I will find out a little later when I have a distance to it. And um, yeah. 
you know, and distance is for me one very important thing to, um, um, well, to categorize um, ideas and uh, distance and working on other things. So um, I, I would never be willing to just work on one thing and just go in the studio and go in the studio and do always the same thing. Yeah. I'm rather I'm rather standing up doing the recording and then I'm working on a film and then it just leave it there and then I'm working on the next day on another film then I'm going back to the work that I've done yesterday and so on and uh, the the al this album was actually then uh, took me maybe a half a year about a year to collect yeah all the little pieces and uh, yeah and then this year it was I, I felt after um, you know, New Year's, I had the feeling, oh, if I would win uh, a prize, I will maybe have no time to do an album anymore. So um, I have to make sure that I've, I'm doing this album beforehand. Yeah. And so that's what I that's what I did. I love how it really kind of crosses both those worlds of you've got such beautiful simplicity in the in the instrumentation at times. But then you can feel there's a there's a kind of breath of electronic in there, you know. Not you know every track is so different, but um, city slang is one that I really really love. Um, I kind of I, I love the sort of um, the the sound of the piano and the melody on that. Um, it's just really really emotional and the journey as well that that kind of that song that piece goes on as well. Yeah. I, I think it's um, yeah I really I really love that one. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, honestly, it's, um, you know, the uh, the pieces uh, on that album, there are two lyrical pieces, it's Loved Ones and, um, you know, Life, the Limitation of Lifetime, which yeah. were the first, now the first two singles, and yeah. the rest is, um, is a, you know, some are more clubby, some are more, you know, we feel like, oh, if you pump that up, it would be like a massive dance track, but it's not, it's actually yeah. played with the piano. And I try to be, um, you know, in a way also a little bit, uh, you know, that not that it's not getting too cheesy in a way, but in which yeah. is with the piano, with the piano, it's very easy to get into an, you know, yes, of course, you can write very blossoming piano pieces, but um, to find a way that me and maybe also the listeners are getting somehow more in their own conscious and they start dreaming uh, or they start drifting in a way that as, that is in a way my my idea of music uh, in a way that um, you know that I'm drifting and I, I share it with others yeah and maybe they are you know they do the same and some of them are for them it's too abstract or too weird or where, what is all that noise in there or things like that but then there are others that are reflecting me that they they like actually that there is the that tempos are fighting with each other yeah you know, shift shifts are happening slowly but you're suddenly feeling like oh i hear something yeah it kind of makes you go heard. what was that yeah. yeah 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 absolutely and generosity as well i loved i loved them um, i really yeah it's just such a great it really does. It makes you kind of um, makes you think, which mm -hmm. I really like. It's kind of um, not many things make you do that. So many things distract you, I think, in life now. So to have something that actually makes you think is really um, it's a welcome relief, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm, uh, well, that's that's uh, good news, because uh, in a way <laughs> I'm uh, I'm uh, not a big fan of consuming music in a kind of way that um, I'm getting lame or that I'm just like suddenly feeling I don't feel my body anymore which can yeah. happen with commercial music but it can also happen with very very extreme abstract music um, that mm -hmm. I don't feel my my body anymore you know yeah but um, I always try to find a, a way of um, you know um, feeding the brain and but also feeding the physicality of music so that you emotionally feel something um, and I think if these two levels are you know covered then which is in a way uh, the same ingredients as a good story yeah I mean if you read a, if you read a good book um, it actually you know, it um, makes your brain work. And at the same time, you feel your heart. You can sometimes cry. 
you you um, you feel with the protagonist um, you in a way reflect your own story and i am in a way my piano playing is a little bit like a storytelling yeah with an in, with an instrument um am i right in thinking that um um mag uh, I can't even say it now. Magnan magnanimity. magnanimity. It's a hard word yes. to say. Magnan magnanimity. It's like um, what uh, an enemy is another one as well. Uh, yeah. Magnanimity. Mag. I can't see. Here we go. Magnanimity. Uh, there we go. Magnanimity. Um, yeah. That 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 was uh, originally intended to be um, be part of the the work for All Quiet. No, actually, what oh, was okay, a part sorry. of All Quiet was noise. Oh, I'm sorry. And My it's mistake. Actually, and the, the well, the piece noise is actually um, it's actually the end credits of All Quiet. Yeah, I thought I, it's it's yeah, yeah but it's strange kind of sort of um, there was a familiarity there kind of thing in terms of yes, yeah, and, yeah, yes, absolutely. and and and, uh, and um, noise was a piece that I I've, I've written in a way you know of course there was a, the discussion during the film and I was con connected with the album and I was like. Um, you know, there was always the question, will there be a song that they buy or will there yeah. be a song that they, um, uh, you know, where they uh, just use the, um, where they want me to score it. And then yeah. at some point it was clear there's no, um, they can't pay for the for the song. So um, they asked me to do it. And then I, I I've done this piece and I was like, man wait a second this sounds so <laughs> much like an album track um and then i asked them to license um the music um as an album track um because i said it it was already well it was already existing yeah um, in, in certain parts so and they were totally fine with that and um so i owned i'm owning that piece um and so i just felt um, it would be nice to it's lovely fits so well it, you know bring it onto the album specifically because the quality and that had it already in the in the film it cleans in a way the you know uh, in a way your mind you have you go through a journey and then this piece comes and you're like you know okay yeah i can take take the headphones off and i can do something else but it it makes it a little bit clean yeah um we had the pleasure of chatting to charlie brooker actually um about uh, a couple of months ago um about the new black mirror series which you were was it beyond the sea the episode that you you yes. did oh uh -huh. so great so uh -huh. good uh yeah. that, that the i mean yeah, you kind of never know when the new series of Black Mirror comes in in terms of like where it's going to go. But that episode mm -hmm. in particular was was whoa, it was a sucker punch. That was crikey. Yeah, is it yeah. a fun show? Yeah, to, the... It's a fun, fun, you know, kind of world to be part of. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, uh, I'm um, specifically uh, because with John Crawley, um, the director, I love yeah. to work with him. He yeah. is a, he is a, has a very um, he's. He has a lot of similarities to Edward, yeah. in a way. There's some, you know, there, he's generous and and lovely and uh, a person you discuss as a, you know, not in a work matter, more like an artist. With um, and when he asked me if I want to collaborate with him, I said straight away yes, and I will <laughs> always do because I think, you know, these guys are, there are guys out there that are when they. And, and, you know and and you know whoever work in the creative world um the, there are people out there that uh, read very carefully and they select very carefully and once they are done with the selection i don't have to think too much about my selection i'm just yeah. like i uh, it's i i trust them because they already uh you know worked so hard on it and and that makes my process of decisions so much easier um mm rather than um, having somebody you know um saying what big things they want to do and then you look at the result and you're like oh okay uh, that, that, yeah. that didn't work <laughs> yeah um we've got we've got a couple of um scores as well to look forward to um one life um which mm -hmm. is is coming up um from james halls who i'm such a fan of again he's worked on black mirror but um slow mm -hmm. horses recently he did which i thought mm -hmm. was a great series i loved that so much um mm -hmm. so yeah that i'm looking forward to that um which is, is that this year that's 
been released? I've, well, it's, I, I, yeah, I I, well, it's uh, it has a premiere in Toronto this weekend. Oh, great. Oh, good luck. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then back with yeah. our Edward again on um, Conclave. Is that right? Yes, yes. And they are mixing right now at Abbey Road. Um, Conclave oh, wow. And, and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a... Uh, um, both films are have their own strength mm -hmm. and uh, making the score for both films was fantastic because uh, they are so different um you know there's uh, uh one life is so much more i wouldn't say more emotional but it has a much more deeper like let's say more not scory but more melody um, yeah is, is is needed in that film in uh, um, conclave um it's much more about the thrill and the you know the 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 let's say the hits and the, the you know, it, it's much more like a um, artistic piece in a way yeah to find the right moments and i mean the the it's the same work as on all quiet uh, in a way that it's very forensically looked in each scene where the the music sits and when it comes to the foreground and when it's in the background and that is already written in all the pieces so mm. there's not much of mixing uh, in a way of you know going back and forth yeah it's already uh, in there and that makes it of course so much more clear in a way what music does so these these are two, two different films but very nice I, I love them both um, and then I'm so excited because I'm going to come along to your live show in um, in November in London. You've got a tour, mm -hmm. live dates. So you're, you're kind of London, Berlin, Lisbon, um, Utrecht, um, Belgium. Yeah, and there's one I in, mean, it's, uh, yeah. in Leuven, it's I think, been... in Leuven. Amazing. And, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's a, a small tour, but I'm, I'm actually not any more willing to go for weeks and weeks on a... You're too busy <laughs> yeah and also also physically i always felt like a lo touring longer than a week is uh, physically and mentally it's not good because you're always in um, in a rush you're tired um you have to uh, concentrate and uh, i would say that it's not delivering to the to the concert specifically when you work like me um you i'm improvising uh, most of the concerts there are parts oh, wow. of the album there are parts of the album incorporated um, this time, but um, I still love to work freely. Um, you know, in a way, the idea what I said about the album and how I work here is in a way the same idea that I have to a concert. The concert is not for me, therefore, to uh, actually play one to one the pieces of the album. It's much more like a hey, thank you for coming because maybe you heard about the album. Here are two pieces, but all the rest is free and new. And and uh, wow. and now, and now, you know, so um, in a way, and I would say the audience feels that when you when you go on stage and you are, you know, you're trying to create and uh, you're fiddling with the with the um, effects and you're trying to get something out that is real and and you know has the power um uh, yeah that's actually yeah that's what i'm doing great i can't wait i'm so excited yeah. about it um mm. thank you so much for your time today and and just it's, it's so lovely to catch up with you and to get to say congratulations as well since the last time we talked and also congratulations on philanthropy i just yeah i really just i love where it takes me both kind of physically and mentally so yeah, thank you so much for that. And I look forward to seeing seeing whatever the world is you create live when we come along yeah. in November. Yeah, and watch out when we, um, that might be interesting for you as well, because we are uh, at the moment filming a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people in real life uh, that are in a way expressing the aspect of humanity that has nothing to do with, I would say mainly a music video, but we're trying to, figure out how we can connect that with uh, actually with a you know with a, um, a real existence yeah. out there and uh, so there's a, a filmmaker in London um, Tilly Shiner is her name and she's yeah. um, she's she's at the moment looking at a lot of different uh, 
short films and she showed me already a couple of them and they are really uh, they're wonderful and uh, they they are weird and there's a lot of stories that we are still looking at the format because we don't know yet if they are if we keep them one to one or if we yeah. make them you know you know but at the mo it, it feels like it's more like a a video without music that promotes uh, a record <laughs> Well, maybe I can, you and Tilly can come on when you have a kind of, you know, when the, when the, when the, yeah, when you've made those decisions and you have it fully formed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. I think she, she might be wonderful to talk to because she's Great. such uh, interesting, um, she does a lot of interesting, weird films and she comes more from the, uh, from the art, uh, you know, art school in, in London. I think yeah. she was at a, what is Goldsmiths it? Goldsmiths or, or St. No. St. Martin's. St. Martin's. She was yeah. on St. Martin's. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and go and straight online to look at her stuff right now. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Volker. You take care. Thank you for your you time. Too. Take Thank care. You. Bye. Bye. -bye.